Hello friends, welcome back to the channel and thank you for joining me today. Throughout the month of October and the first two weeks of November, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I have created 12 near-death experience compilations created from the interviews that I've done over the last couple of years. And we're going to be hearing from near-death experiencers on a variety of topics. And so the first topic that we're going to look at today and tomorrow is the love and light that people have experienced on the other side. So we're going to hear from a whole bunch of people, one right after another, on what that experience was like for them. If you'd like to connect with any of my guests, I will have their names displayed on the screen as they are speaking, and I will have each of them listed in the description box with their contact links. If you'd like to connect with me, you can also find my links to my social media in the description if you'd like to support this channel thank you for watching that helps out a, a lot just by itself but my patreon link is also in the description box thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoy and then <laughs> What I was waiting for showed up in the form of a light that was brighter. Don't stare at the sun, but if you had a million suns and you could safely stare at them, I'd say brighter than that. I have no other measure of brightness other than the star that we circle around. Didn't hurt my eyes. It came up under me with such power oh, I mean just immeasurable power and uh, I I really do have a hard time with words and how do I describe that I was with God this was God this was our creator in the reels I mean like Moses at the burning bush except I was in the middle of the burning bush and it was all love, all love beyond my capacity to share with you how we are so very loved unconditionally. Um, it's just beautiful how much God loves us. And even God is such a weak three letters. Um, I'm, I'm more comfortable saying my creator I don't know, but I did have words. I don't know if I said them aloud, but I said, in my perspective, homey home. I later learned in sharing all this with my parents that when I was little and learning language and we'd been away from the neighborhood and, and we were pulling up to the house, I'd go, homey home, homey home. I was probably about two, you know. It was a Gucci goo moment for my folks, but. I don't remember that, but by golly, in the presence of my creator, I said, homey home, and I was homey home. This light, or the light of God, or whatever you want to call it, um, spread out under me in all directions, and as if I had eyes, like Superman eyes, because again, the brightness was incredible, but also didn't hurt. I could see it spreading out all directions in a linear fashion, like forever. And at the same time, it was layering on top of itself. And I was just given to know, as they say, that I was beholding eternity. And it wasn't just time, as we describe it, but it was also dimensions. And they were literally endless. And uh, it was staggering. Then this love expanded. Like the love was, all, it was eternal love. I could, I, all the love that was, all the love that is, all the love that will be on a universal scale, all the love, the size of our universe focused in on me, like, like a laser right inside me till I was, I was illuminated with, with this divine gift of love and the voice said in the way that i love you now i've always loved you 
and I and always not like Peter, but always since the origin of my soul self, since the creation of my of my consciousness eons ago, I was I've been as beloved as that. And I was infilled with this and the voice said, in the way I love you now, I've always loved you and I love everyone. But as I did that same light, that that light I felt at the scene of the accident that came in, it came again. The light came and surrounded me and I felt like I was rising above the hospital bed. And as I did, I, I, I felt so joy, the pain was gone again. The grief was gone again. I mean, I, I had struggled so vividly with, with all of that. At that. And yet this time, you know, the, 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 the light surrounded me, it lifted me up, and then it seemed to like dissipate. It seemed to just disappear. And I was in the most incredibly uh, beautiful place. I mean, I was in the most beautiful place. And, and people say heaven or the spirit world or the other side. I mean, the only word I can use that comes close is I was home. I mean, I was home. I, I, I felt so welcome, so familiar, so comforted. And I'm moving very, very swiftly through this very, very dark tunnel. And then I come around a corner. And as I come around a corner, I could see the end of the tunnel. And at the end of the tunnel, there was this amazing velocity of white light. And again, the thought in my head, because I'm processing, the thought in my head was, if I survive this, I'll probably lose my sight. Because you know how we say you should not look up at the sun? Well, the, the light before me was infinitely more intensive than the sun. And then I merged. I exited the turn. And I merge with the light. And I know this sounds kind of lame, but there are really, really no words in any language to, ex to explain what it feels like when we merge with light. It was this most exhilarating feeling, this most peaceful feeling. Um, and I was very aware that I had become love. I was very aware, instantly aware, that light and love is the same particle. And I was acutely aware that I had become, I had merged with this light and I had become love. Immediately this darkness, it started like open up like this, like clouds and this golden light comes right through the, the, this, this darkness. And, and, and I'm going in and I see this, this shapes of, of beings out there calling me, come and they're celebrating. There's, there was like a party going on, literally like a party celebrating, come, come, you know, they're just saying, come and Karina, come. And they're calling me Karina. And I'm like, but well, nobody calls me Karina, but my own family in Colombia. So I'm like, but I knew that I was not worth, like I felt like I was not worthy to go in there. And I just kept, you know, I keep pushing back, but then yet yeah, I wanted to be there. And, and immediately, I, 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 the only way I can explain it is when you slick your hair back, you know, like when you slick it really, really back and you see the little tiny hair popping out and that golden light touches you, you start feeling this warmth and this power and you just feel love. Like, let me tell you, there's no love here. And I'm sure you know what I mean. Is that, a, I can't, I can't explain the power of this love. Okay. It's so intense, so beautiful. And, and as I'm going in, um, I still have my eyes, but I, I just, I just, I was thinking this, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy of this. I deserve to go to hell. That's what I said. I said that. And I, he says, welcome home, come, you're home. And I, and I'm like, no, no, you know, and, and he says, open your eyes. And I, I didn't want to open my eyes. And all I asked is if I'm in heaven, I said that if I'm in heaven, show me someone and my family has passed away. Keep in mind that I was not attached to anyone because I was keep moving. So I really haven't lost yet anyone from my family that I feel I had lost friends that I had cried more than my own family. So I wasn't able to see anybody. But he said, look to your right. And when I, when I looked to the right, I could barely see 
and he says, open your eyes. And I opened my eyes like this because I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to be deceived because I saw that ugly face before I went through. But I knew I was in the right place. And when I opened like that, I just see my Yorkie and um, my old, my old dog. And that's like literally just like, I just went right in. And then um, that joy and that peace. And when I walk in, this beautiful, white, glowing angel, like this light that I'm still seeing right now. I just saw this beautiful white angel. And he, in this angel had this, what I thought then was a box because it was brownish. And, he, and she was like this or he, because I couldn't tell whether she or he, you know, long, beautiful hair and was not talking to me, but I could hear this gorgeous, amazing, stunning voice again with love. Uh, say, come, come, you're home. I'm feeling love coming through me as if it was like, I, I always liken it to standing in front of a fireplace on a warm or on a cold winter's day. You know, that radiant heat that comes through you uh, from a fire that's what this love felt like and i knew it was love because i had never felt this level of love from anyone before like this was big really really big and very welcoming and so peaceful i just wanted to melt into it and i felt as if you know somebody was just holding me um not not literally but i felt like i was being cradled almost and and welcomed and accepted and then i saw this light and it was just at first it was just a pinprick of light and in darkness in total darkness to see a pinprick of, i mean it draws your attention and you're just you're you're staring at that you know and it felt like i was moving toward it it was coming toward me i'm not really sure but it it, it I was getting closer and closer to this light. Well, as I got closer, I started feeling these waves, these waves of love that were just felt like they were just wrapping me up. And like I said, it was incredibly peaceful. And as I got closer and closer, this light I realized was millions and millions of fragments of light. And they were all, you know, like in unison, they were of, a, of a, like a single mind. They would, if you've ever seen like a school of sardines or something in, in, in the light where they're circling and they're like this giant, um, just this giant ball of, of little lights that suddenly will move one way and then move the other, all like they're, they're in communication with each other. Well, that's kind of what this was like, but only on an infinite scale. And these fragments of light were just beautiful. And I'll, I have to say, I was in gaga awe of this, you know, of what I was experiencing. And as I got closer, and this love just kept amplifying, kept getting bigger and bigger. And just, just like I said, it felt like it was just wrapping me up in this, in this sense of being loved. And <clears throat> which is hard to explain, you know, I mean, love is one of those intangible things that, you know, we can't, we can't say, oh, there it is, you know, and, and this is what it looks like. You know, it was just one of those, that feeling of being loved. And um, as I got closer, three fragments broke away and they came and they greeted me and they welcomed me home. I was in this beautiful cosmic space. And as soon as I arrived, it was like all of those questions that I had, all of the curiosity about the body, all the identification with who I was or am, it just evaporated. Because suddenly in this space, I was being held. And I was being held in this way that's it's truly ineffable. I've never experienced being held in this lifetime the way that I was held there. And it was like, I was just melting in to this divine love. And at the same time it was holding me, there was this inner knowing that I was holding part of myself because what was holding me, I was part of. And so it was at that time that what I refer to as my angelics, 
or guides, the vernacular doesn't matter, but three orbs of light that I had recognized immediately. As soon as I saw them, I was like, I know you, I've known you since childhood. You know, they were so recognizable and their presence brought so much peace and validation because as a child i had shared seeing these these orbs and these energies and feeling the angelics and i had been told because i grew up in a very religious dogmatic um roman catholic family that these were exaggerations and that these were fantasies and i was telling stories and i i couldn't understand as a human at that time why you know a religion that honored the angels and this realm couldn't be open to a child receiving these energies. And so there was a disconnect that happened for me very young um, with religion. But that said, in this space, I knew exactly what they were. They were angels. And it didn't matter if angels were associated to spirituality or religion or any of that. They were just these divine beings that had this vibration that was so healing. And I knew because they communicate um, in that realm through telepathy or inner knowing that they had been with me, not just in this lifetime, not just in this body, but basically throughout all time and space. So being with them, I felt just so incredibly supported. I'm just staring and staring and staring, looking for this glimmer of light. And I finally find it and I'm just like fixated on it. And I, I don't deviate my vision at all, because I know as long as I can connect to that, I'm going to be safe. And it started to grow when I started to get closer to it and it grew more and I got closer to it. And, and all of a sudden the light was all around me. And my body just could relax and, and be at peace. And as I'm moving further into this light and I'm looking at it and, and it's white, but it's not a color we have on earth. It's not in the earthly spectrum of color because there's a brilliance to it and there's a, um, a luminosity to it. And I don't even have words to describe it. It's just otherworldly is what it is. And as it's surrounding me and I'm feeling the sense of all rightness and, and well-being. I'm moving, moving, moving. And now all of a sudden, the white is parting like clouds. It's parting. And I'm floating, literally. It almost sounded like something out of a you know, silly movie. I'm floating through it. And as I get to the end of it, as it's moving back and I'm moving forward, there are two rows of beings in front of me and they look like monks they're in the brown robes with the hoods up and their energy was just very gentle and kind which i growing up in the catholic religion um the monks were probably the less severe part of the religion they were you know the the kinder, gentler souls, it seemed like to me as a kid growing up. And so that's why I think I had that vision. I think we always get something that's analogous to us, so it doesn't feel foreign or scary. So I'm floating between them and I'm feeling this, this love just surrounding me from them. It's like they're just, you know, vibrating love to me. And, and I'm feeling feelings I've never had before. I'm feeling cherished. I had never felt cherished. I had never felt loved unconditionally. I had never felt safe on a level that I was feeling it. And I felt like I was coming home, which was something I had wanted my whole life was that sense of all rightness within me and connection and all of that. And even though I had been married, had a child, I still had never felt that. In that experience, I experienced God, <laughs> yeah, um, and it was overwhelming. <laughs> the love was like I, I, I still can't. Every time I think about it, I just, it just, I go crazy about it. It's overwhelming. I, I can't really put it into human terms, but I can only say it. 
um, oh, uh, like it's like kind of like being on Hawaii, and you're you're in a, a, a relaxer chair, and it's the perfect weather and the perfect sun, and everything is happy, and and you feel so great and so loved. It's a perfect day. Imagine that a hundred times, and that's how it is over there, <laughs> or close to. <laughs> it is. You know, it's no joke. And it's uh, uh, after that, I was cured. No more depression, no more drinking, nothing. I was cured. I saw this light and that I was approaching a light. Um, and then when I came into um, this light, well, I came closer to this light, I felt a sense of peace and a kind of, oh, it's okay, I've been here before. Um, this kind of familiarity. Um, so I felt that. And then as I came into the light, it was just like golden sparkles and, um, yeah, just, you know, when we see uh, those golden, uh, the orbs on, on your camera lens, you know, from light being reflected and everything was just sparkly and, and golden light. And I just came in as soon as I came into that light this kind of knowing permeated me and I was just like oh okay and I just thought oh it's so simple but I wasn't given to remember <laughs> what that was imbued but it was this kind of oh okay it's all so simple but what did happen was uh I suddenly was gazing into a huge waterfall of stars and it was like an awesome sort of sight because it was like the size of Niagara Falls or, or what have you, a really huge waterfall. But instead of tons of water spilling over the edge, there were millions of stars cascading and sparkling. And it was just, oh, it's just beautiful. And uh, I, I could see shooting stars as well, just kind of slowly go, going over the top and, and, I looked down and as I looked down, I felt as if, well, I'm not felt, I knew that I was looking into one galaxy and then into another. And as my gaze became sharper and sharper, you know, I could see all these beautiful nebulas, all these colors appearing. And, and I was looking into infinity. I was looking into the whole universe. And in fact, I realized that I was actually now at this point in the universe itself. I wasn't in a darkened space. Um, so that was like incredibly exciting and uh, uh and i felt very much a part of that universe and uh, it is and still do actually so that's kind of that's one thing that stayed with me but as i i pulled myself back over it was interesting i i th okay i said to myself okay well i can't see my family but they're going to be okay because they're going to be coming here at some point they're going to be experiencing all this beauty and all this wonder that i am so it's not the end for them so i kind of I got over it really quick, which is very unlike me uh, from old, because uh, I carried a lot of guilt and shame and worry. But I, I had none of that at all. There was no feelings of that. I, I was literally, the, the past didn't matter anymore. The future didn't matter anymore. All that, that really mattered was that I was in this space and it was beautiful. And um, yeah, some I, I suddenly realized as I lay back down again that this energy that I was still feeling from the from the hands of the healers was now getting stronger. It had suddenly turned up like somebody had just turned the dial up big time, you know, and I thought something's going on. And I looked and just beyond the being who was stood at my feet, who I'd first seen that greeted me, was this huge tunnel of white light. And this tunnel of white light was just coming towards me. And the intensity of light that was coming from the middle was just so profoundly beautiful and uh i felt i looked in awe because uh, it was surrounded by all these flames that were slowly circulating all the way around it was very powerful very epic and um and almost frightening but i felt no sense of fear there but it would any other place it would have been it would have been like oh what's going on here but all i felt was excitement because um the energy that was coming from the center of this light was causing every molecule of my body to vibrate with this again with this sensation of love and 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 of being and it was just it was just beautiful 
So I knew at this moment in time that uh, what I was looking at here for me was the source of all creation. You know, this is this is God. This is where it all happens. This is where it all starts from this tunnel of white light and not the image of God that I would have expected to have maybe met, you know, on the next plane, which would be, you know, as we as most religion forms are, you know, it's, it's a human, it's a human form. It's that, you know, in Christianity, it's the, it's the guy with the long beard, you know, on the ceiling of the, the Vatican in Rome. Uh, so, but no, it was this huge tunnel of white light. And so one side re had, had this realization, it was just so profound. And I remember just laying my head back and, and I was, I remember laughing to myself because I thought this is, this is incredible. This is all these beautiful wonders. And this is, this kind of tops it all, what it did. I just looked outside and said, wow, look at the colors. And I said, look at how beautiful they are. Look at the, 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 the tree trunks, how beautiful brown, the, the colors were alive. And I was just like, wow. And I thought to myself in my head, you know, I said, what a beautiful day to die. Not realizing that I was no longer in my body, you know, and I'm like, I was standing. There was no, all pain was gone. There was absolutely no pain, but nothing but love and unconditional acceptance. Um, and I kept staring towards the TV and in front of me now because I knew there was another presence there. And that presence was the Lord. So, um, and I could feel it. I could just feel his love in his, in, it was intense. But, and at the same time, it was beautiful, it, lo it was loving, it was calming um, in my, and I knew I was home and I just accepted that. And I didn't think about anything this world ever had to offer, including my children, um, anybody. I was, even though I was still in the hospital room, I wasn't there. I was, heaven had opened up to me. God had answered me in person and that love that I felt was him. And that light, if I would have been able to see it, was him. And um, there was no sense of time. So I can't say that it lasts 30 seconds, that it lasts half an hour or an hour. I don't know. Um, I just know that I was wrapped up and in love and all my sins were forgiven. I, I was welcomed home. And the last thing I also heard while I was drowning was uh, the beating of my heart, like pounding, pounding, like boom, boom, boom. Imagine the, the scare. And when I went to the state of peace, silence. And it's what I call the silence behind the silence, because it wasn't just that all the noise was gone, but it was the peace that it brought. So it's just like, oh. And for the rest of my life, Melissa, I wanted that silence. So later in life, I will hide in closets. I will just go into chapels, wherever a space will bring me that silence. <laughs>